Wow, that smells really, really good. Let me do a little more. <laughs> Sometimes, oh dear God, no. <laughs> what is this? Why do I have this here? Why do I have this? Oh no, what's going on here? No, this color is a no. I'm gonna make it work, but it's a no. If I'm triggered in any way by someone's content, it does not mean I don't like you. It means that I am in touch with my emotions. I'm self-aware and I recognize where my triggers are. OMG, what up Wagwan Etis saying it's your girl Minadibia and it has been so long. I know to you it's not gonna feel that way, but for me on the other side filming this video, it has been a long time since I have filmed a YouTube video sitting down here in the living room. So it just feels strange. I'm glad you're here, glad you're watching this video. It's gonna be a chit chat, get ready with me. I know that you all like these kind of videos. I like them too because they feel very conversational. We're gonna touch on lots of different topics. If you're not already subscribed, do that now or watch till the end and then do it at that time. When I'm not here, I'm on Instagram, so follow me there also on TikTok, okay? I post three times a week, okay? So this is one of the videos during the weekdays, and then I also post weekly vlogs on Sundays, usually. I'm sitting in the living room in front of the window, and I'm horrified, because look, the sun is acting a, a fool. You know, I used to film in my studio and the sun was getting on my nerves because it comes into the window. Now I'm on the back side of the house hoping for better results when it comes to the sun because I like to use natural lighting. I do natural and then perhaps an artificial light, but today it's just natural lighting and I like the way it looks. Although some days it just does too much. Way back when I said that we were gonna start off videos with fragrance and I forgot. We are still using the Nest New York Gold Nectar Eau de Parfum, so yum and delish. Spray yourselves, ladies. We're not waiting for a special occasion. We are smelling, ooh, this is so good. I haven't sprayed this in a long time. We are smelling good, looking good all the time. For whom? Thine self. Is it whom or is it who? <laughs> English majors come through. That is so sweet. I love it. Fantastic, amazing. I've already got my e.l.f. lip primer on. Wow, that smells really, really good. Let me do a little more. <laughs> that is so good. All right, what foundation do I have over here? Because you know it's a whole different situation in this kit, we've discussed this. The kit that I have in the bathroom is far different from what I have here. Let's do the NARS Advanced Light Reflecting Foundation. Is This is D3. What did I think about this color? I don't know, I cannot remember. Now this is not gonna be a matte matte routine, honey. This is just a, right now this is just a routine. <laughs> but let's talk about some things, okay? So one of the things that I wanna talk about is money and the just juxtaposition between having money, being able to purchase more than before, but then also trying to remain humble. In Texas, y'all say humble. I don't like that. But you gotta you gotta use the H, use it, it's there for a reason. So let's just jump into it, right? So I grew up in the struggle. I'm not here to compare struggles, but we struggled growing up, you know? And I'm one of the people who, honey, I was not immune to overdraft fees. This is the color D3. I was not immune to stuff like that. I was not immune to Girl, when I get paid, when I get paid, when I get paid, right? I wasn't immune to needing to borrow money and whatever. So now, oh yeah, this is the one that matches me perfectly. I should have gone a little darker, but that's okay. So now that I am in overflow, and obviously I thank the Lord Jesus that I'm in overflow, things are different and I can do a lot more. I can go a lot more places and I'm a lot more free, a lot more comfortable, and I am eternally grateful for that, for that comfortability and flexibility. But with that, I've noticed is a burden where I feel like, well, I don't want to be I don't want it to come across like I'm showing off. But the fact is where I am is where I am. I can't hide where I am. And I also refuse to hide because of where I am. So there's, they're different. Hide where I am, meaning still just, you know, don't do too much, don't buy too much, don't show too much, and then hide myself where I am too. And I refuse to do that because I am where I am because of the grace of God, obvi. And of course, because I work really hard. I mean, God can bless you, but if you ain't gonna do anything with it, then what is happening? You also have to put things in motion and get the job done. So, you know, I do think about that sometimes, like I never want to, because it's never my intention to be like, oh, look at me, look at what I'm doing, where I'm going, what's happening over here. Never ever my intention, but I am also sensitive to the fact that 
I know that it can look that way, but we have talked about this before in other videos where many times it's not that we have said, look at me, look at what I'm doing and what you're not able to do. It ain't that we said that. It's just that perhaps when someone is walking in their blessing, it can trigger someone else to feel inferior because they don't have what you have. So I always have to remind myself that it's all about my heart. So if I post something, if I posted it with the hopes of someone looking and being like, dang, she's doing the exact one thing. Then my heart was wrong when I created the content. Then my heart was wrong when I posted the content. But if I post the content and I know in my heart, the whole reason is just to show whatever it is I'm showing or do whatever it is that I'm doing. And it just so happens I'm in a BMW. It just so happens that when I showed it, I'm showing a Chanel bag, right? I didn't intentionally do this to make someone jealous. Then I gotta let it go. I gotta leave it to God and just understand that it might offend someone. It might trigger someone. But when I posted it, when I did it, it wasn't with the intention to make someone jealous. And I say that because not all often, but there are some times where I might get a comment like that I can tell the person is triggered. I can tell because I've done the work and I continue to do the work. If you're new here, I'm in therapy. I've been in therapy for two years. I think it's great. I think the smartest people are in therapy. However, I do understand that it costs money. I use BetterHelp. It's very affordable. I go every week. It charges my account and I I, I live, but I need it. Like everyone needs it. Whether you're busy, poor, rich, comfortable, flexible, doesn't matter. Everyone needs therapy to me. If you can afford it, I think you should do it, right? And I did a video on all of that. I recognize that sometimes people are triggered whether or not I intended to trigger them. And that's not just me that's everyone we may trigger people and not even realize we trigger them and it's like i mean obviously my position is more like well i'm sorry that wasn't my intention right you might be like screw you i don't care that's your that's your business right so i say that because i do find myself sometimes this is the maybelline superstay active wear concealer what shade is this 45 okay i say that because oh no what's going on here no this color is a no i'm gonna make it work but it's a no like how I say this because I've gotten comments, not a lot here and there, like, oh, did you have to show the car? Oh, whoa, whoa. one time somebody was like, okay, so are you showing us the car or your nails? And I'm like, both the hell I'm sitting in my car that I worked hard for. I'm not going to hide it. Like I'm driving a, I'm driving a BMW. Like what do you want me to do? You see what I'm saying? And it's just like, I could easily let stuff like that make me hide how God has blessed me, but I refuse because number one, when I see somebody doing good, in my definition of doing good, everyone's definition is different, right? You might not want a luxury vehicle and that's fine. It's not, this is not by force, you feel what I'm saying? But when I see somebody doing good by my definition, it's motivating, it's encouraging. And I like things that look nice. So even with my house, how I dress, everything, I like things that look nice. Aesthetics are cute. And if people don't like that, then that is everyone's prerogative. It's like, are you kidding me right now? Or. Uh... <laughs> Like, I'm just laughing because I'm just thinking of some of the things that I've seen and I just, I understand. I'm not laughing at people. I'm just laughing because I understand being triggered, but you have to check that. You got to check that at the door because what in tarnation, you know? I got a phone call. So I just let you see how I got to this place. You know, I love the e.l.f. Camel Powder Foundations. They are so good. I use three different ones and you saw what those are. Now I'm gonna do my eyebrows using the Lip Bar Exact Arch Micro Brow Pencil. And let's continue the conversation. So I recognize that certain things are triggers for people. Actually, now that we're talking about this, I saw a few comments from people who were triggered when I kept talking in my video using the Fenty Foundation when I kept mentioning that it felt like the shade was too dark for me. And I can't lie, off rip, I was offended. 
But then I had to think about it. And then I felt what people were trying to communicate to me. So when I say that a foundation is too dark and that it looks dark on me, that does not mean that I don't want to look dark. In many a video, I have talked about how in the summertime, I have darker shade foundations that I look forward to using because I enjoy looking darker than I normally am. I enjoy being out at a water park or just outside in general. And then when I come back home, I go like this and I see a tan line. And I know we're not supposed to, but I enjoy being in the sun so that I can actually get darker because I wanna put on a, a darker shade foundation because it's just fun. It's just fun to be like, this is my summer shade. This is my winter shade because regardless, we're going to get darker in the summertime. It's just what's gonna happen unless you wear sun protective clothing from head to toe and wear hats and you're just avoiding the sun. But I'm outside, okay? I be outside in these streets. And I like to get a little bit darker because it's fun to just wear a different shade of foundation. I have lots of them. So being a what brown, dark skinned woman, whatever, is not something that I'm ashamed of. Many may consider me to be in the darker category. You might consider me, it doesn't even matter. Like even saying this sounds silly, but I just want to explain that in no way, shape or form was my intention to make women who are darker than me feel less than. That is was not my intention at all. And if that is how it came across in that video, I do apologize because that was not my intention. And I recognize that perhaps me saying it so much like, oh my God, it makes me look dark. I look darker than I actually am, could be a trigger for people. So I do understand that. But I just wanna clarify that that's just not who I am. When we're talking about triggers and going back to the whole money thing, I. I do recognize that just like even with that example that I just provided, even if that wasn't my intention, it could be a trigger for someone to feel less than because their skin tone or less than because they don't have the money or less than because they're riding the bus or whatever, less than because they're not married, they don't have any children. There are lots of things that are triggers for people. And believe me, I am triggered by a lot of things also. I used to ride the bus. I used to stay in overdraft. I mean, I remember praying for a husband and praying for a family, like I get all of that. But then sometimes if it wasn't my intention to trigger someone, it can feel like, well, dang, like, geez, like what in the world? That wasn't even what I was trying to do. I'm just trying to celebrate where I am right now without having to feel like I can't do that because it's going to trigger someone else. We're back to the money conversation. It can sometimes be uncomfortable in my position to celebrate because I want to be humble and I don't want to trigger anyone. But then it's burdensome to feel like I have to always think about how people are going to feel. I have to always think about how my audience might take this piece of content because I don't want to come across as boasting. Like I said, it's a very peculiar juxtaposition between the two because I wanna one, be true to myself and celebrate what God has done, but then of course be mindful of how it might make other people feel. I cannot please everyone. I am certainly not a people pleaser. However, I think a lot, okay? I'm an introvert, I'm very introspective. So I am I think a lot about things in general. So I just wanna talk about that. I don't even believe that we came to a period. I don't even think we came to a, a, a full stop on that topic. I just, to me, it just felt like a stream of consciousness, okay? so. There's that. So this is a different topic that I wanna add on to here because it does relate to money, but it's different. And I got some questions about when to start paying taxes as an influencer. And of course it, it relates to money. So let's just jump into it. And I think it'd be interesting for those of you who even aren't content creators, but are just curious. So when I was not full-time, I was not an LLC. I was a sole proprietor, sole prop, and I was working a full-time job, a W-2 job. All the income and expenses that I incurred with my content creation business were filed with my personal taxes. So I'm not an accountant, but I was still, I mean, when I started to make substantial money, right? Like, I don't remember how much it was a year, but come on, like, you know, enough. Then I told my accountant and then she was looking, she would ask me for the expenses and the income that I was making. Now this wasn't five years ago. I started doing that maybe what, three years? No, 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 no. I've been, I've been in LLC for two years. So four, maybe four years ago. And actually I was in the loss on paper. It was in the negative in terms of what I earned and what I, from the side business, what I earned and what I spent. So I actually got money for that. So when you start a new business and you are in the negative on paper, you actually get a tax benefit from that. But I was filing as a sole proprietor, not a business per se, but certainly making extra income on the side. You do still need to file that. When do you file it? At how much income do you file it? Talk to your accountant because I don't know. I don't 
I don't know. You, you do want to make sure you are claiming, you know, you're claiming them and stuff because, you know, if you get paid a thousand dollars from ABC Corporation and they report that they paid you and you don't report that you got that money, you're in big trouble. So uh, it's just always important to, to report that. And if you're in the negative on paper, you actually get a benefit from that with your taxes. So there's that. And I recently got an accountant. Well, I've had one, but you know, one that actually understands what I do. That was recent. We used another woman, you know, she didn't understand what I was doing. So it just made more sense to go with someone that understood content creation, influencing, whatever. Okay. So yeah, paying the taxes is important. Talking to your accountant and making sure that your books are all good. I use QuickBooks and as you saw in my vlog, I was using the, it was brief, the QuickBooks bookkeeper, but no. Now my accountant has bookkeeping built in. So she, I know it's her team, they handle that. So I don't have to be over here categorizing. I know, I don't have time. Nope, I don't have time. I skim my receipts, I keep track of those and everything else. The, the bookkeeper is, okay, oh, bookkeepers are handling that. I just do not have time. I gotta focus on content creation and managing my schedule and contracts and emails and whatever. I do not have time to be categorizing expenses and, and income. Mm -mm. I mean, I do record my income in QuickBooks, of course. I do monitor, I do label, and I do categorize my mileage. That's important because I'm the one driving the car, but you know, all the other stuff, bookkeeper, very, very important. Very, 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 very important. So another question was, how do I keep track of what I've made quarterly and monthly? Well. Not all of my income is through sponsorships. I did do a video where I explained to you where my income comes from, the different streams of income. So make sure you watch that video. But how do I keep track of it? I can see all of it in QuickBooks. It's not categorized by type, I don't think, but maybe when I pull my profit and loss statement, I, can, I would have to look into my reports. Perhaps I can see what came perhaps from sponsorships or from YouTube or from whatever. I haven't looked because this is new. So I don't know if it's categorized that way. I mean, I would have to tell my accountant the different categories and then she can make a report for me to see that. I'm sure it's there. I'm gonna ask her. I myself don't do that. I can just see the income, the profit and loss, you know, the different types of income, the different types of expenses, the months comparatively to last year, the quarters, all of that. QuickBooks, if they want to sponsor me, go ahead and do that, okay? And it does make life easy. I thought I could do stuff in Excel. Girl, please, no. You're gonna waste your time. Don't be trying to do stuff in Excel, mm -mm, the devil. It ain't gonna work out. Excel is not gonna get you what you need. You need something automated. It's just great. You link all your accounts to it and it pulls everything in. And then someone, the bookkeeper, or you, if you wanna waste time, needs to go in and categorize everything, fix everything, do all this. Who has time? You are the talent. You need to work. Hello? You need to be working, not over here doing accounting duties. Like, who's doing that, you know? So just wanted to touch on that, but I feel like the conversation was a little bit spotty because I got a phone call. <laughs> but I wanna know in the comments below what your thoughts are when you see a content creator doing well I put that in quotes because doing well is relative. Somebody might not, like, I just, I'm not gonna go into it. I, we're all, we all are, we are all adults. Do you feel triggered? Because I've also talked in we, in a weekly vlog or two or three or four, even on IG posts about it being okay to unfollow or mute someone for a period of time if you feel triggered by their content. I do it all the time and I have the right. I'm not gonna ask anyone for permission. I'm going to do what I need for myself. So if I'm being triggered by somebody's content, whether it be home content, family content, marriage content, fashion content, travel content, whatever content, fitness content. If I'm triggered in any way by someone's content, it does not mean I don't like you. It means that I am in touch with my emotions. I'm self-aware and I recognize where my triggers are. If that is my experience, then I'm going to mute or unfollow. And again, it doesn't mean I don't like you. It means that I'm in touch with my emotions. I am self-aware and I'm doing what I need. End of story. So I also am a proponent of understanding self and what self needs and then doing just that. I'm never the kind of person to be like, oh, you don't follow me. Oh, you don't be commenting. Where you at? You, you know, you, you hate us. No, everyone should do what's best for them because best believe I'm gonna do what's best for me all the time, every single time, you know? So. In that aspect, I do think that it's very healthy to assess on a continual basis to say, how is this content making me feel? You know, if she puts a $1,200 Sephora haul title up and it makes me feel inferior, was it her intention to make me feel inferior? Or is this a trigger for me because I am in a financial strain? 
And I understand financial strain, like that is a fact. But of course I wasn't on YouTube when I was in financial strain. So I get that, but anybody who knows me in real life knows that. So that's why I go back to the, was this her intention to make you feel inferior? Anybody, if I watch a video and I feel like, dang, I wish I looked like that, what the hell? <laughs> Right? Like, was it her intention to come on here and make me feel bad about myself? No, but that's how I'm feeling right now. So now that I have this information, I've gathered this information, what am I going to do about it? That I think is very important in this day and age for us to assess and to make a choice based on what we need. Again, don't think I came to a stop sign with that. Don't think that I, ca I think I'm on a bridge with this. I don't think that I came to a full stop, but I, just wanted to have this conversation because it really could go either way. Something being intentional or something really just not. And then the way we took it. I'm not one to gaslight. I do not like being gaslit. We talked about it on IG stories recently too, where I'm just like, to hell. I don't like the whole apology of, if I made you feel that way, lies. You made me feel that way. So now where's the apology, right? Like earlier when I talked about the whole dark skin stuff and how some people were offended by that, that wasn't my intention. So I'm not gonna say, if I offended you then, sorry. Obviously I did. Okay, so I've <laughs> made it this far with my crease color. I'm using this Wet n Wild color icon eyeshadow palette called Heart and Soul. I've used this in the past before. And then this Maven Beauty palette, I just used the dark, deep purple inside of it. I have been doing the natural look for a long time and I be forgetting the halo and the cut crease and the whatever and the whatever. Comment below and let me know if you have been doing more simple looks lately because I know I have, okay? So I've done this look before, I have, you know? And this is Rare Beauty Luminizer. But like I said, I don't know if we have really put a bow on this conversation. It was really scattered, but comment below and let me know what your thoughts are on it. Again, it's not in an effort to be offensive in any way, but just to share what's on my heart and how I've been feeling. None of it is offensive to people, although I can't control that. And if and when I do offend, I'll address it from there. I'm not gonna walk on eggshells at all, but I do understand the idea of understanding where people are. There is something to be said about that, to be able to say, I understand that this was offensive to you and I'm sorry that was not my intention, but this is my reality. So I'm not gonna hide that. You see what I'm saying? So yeah, praise the Lord and let's finish up this look. Okay, so here we are with the finished look on the inside of my lip. I am using an old lip color that is no longer available. It is so good, I can't stop using it. Okay, so I used the Lip Bar Savage on the outside and then I used Slow Down from ColourPop, the Shayla collab from ages ago. It's still good and it's not giving me any blisters. <laughs> the color is fantastic. This reminds me of Chai Genius from Maybelline that is sold out and drives me insane because the video on IG has gone viral and y'all can't find it. I hate that, I know, I'm gonna keep on looking. I hope that this conversation made you think of a few things. Again, comment below and let me know. Let's keep it positive. I mean all of this in love, honest to God. I'm glad you're here watching my videos. Make sure you watch two more. I'm gonna leave those for you here. And as always, I'm glad you're here in general. I do appreciate it. And I'm gonna see you in my next video. Bye.